I wasn't scared, but when my best friend didn't recognize me, I began to get worried. Grabbing the dress on the sides, I lifted the skirt off the ground and walked in. Even when I signed in, nobody paid any attention when I wrote down the name Renee, the lady handed me a pink ticket and let me in. It was the annual guess who party at school. At least 40 students, 20 male and 20 female, were selected by the teachers, then privately asked to do it. Of course the girls dressed like guys and the guys like girls, but it was all great fun, and having attended several of them, I knew that at least some of the boys always looked fantastic to say the least, and some of the girls sometimes looked more masculine than some of the guys. The Guess Who parties were started back in the 60s, and had become an annual event that almost everyone looked forward to. A lot of stores, beauty shops, dress shops and others always wanted to be involved because of the huge publicity, which always drew a lot of attention to the event. The teachers, a panel made up of names drawn from a hat, always selected students, usually only those they thought had at least some chance of pulling it off. Like I said, those that were selected were always told in private, and when Mr. Benton told me, I was shocked. I never thought that I could do it, and hadn't even thought about it, not until he told me I had been chosen. When my mom found out that I had been selected, well, she went crazy on me. Not having any sisters, I think mom went all out just so she could have the chance to buy all the stuff a girl I would need, and maybe delude herself into thinking that maybe I could play at being her daughter, for at least a little while. My dad thought it was great fun, and really encouraged mom to do her best to make me into a real doll as he put it. I knew that was the wrong thing to tell my mother, because she took that as not only a test of her skills, but an obligation. Standing there in my room in nothing but my briefs, mom took a lot of measurements, weighed me, took my height, and after writing it all down, disappeared into her sewing room. I was left hoping that I would still have some shred of myself left when she was done, especially after she started telling me what she had thought I should wear. It might have been funny, except mom was taking her task way too much to heart, and unless I said absolutely not and made a fuss about it, I was going to find myself all dressed up as a girl. But I was unable to tell her that, knowing by the look on her face that she really wanted me to try it. Besides, being asked to do it was sort of a status symbol in a way. Not many were asked, and even the ones that didn't manage to pull it off were always well thought of because they dared to take the chance to look foolish. It's formal, so we'll look for a nice but moderately sexy dress. You'll need some curves, so I'll see what I can do about that, and every girl likes to wear her best lingerie to an event like this, so maybe I'll be able to find something that's useful as well as sexy. The next day at school the rumors were rampant about who was going to participate, and thankfully, my name was never mentioned. That was just about the only good thing about it. If nobody thought that I could dress as a girl, then nobody would guess me at the party. By the time I got home mom was ready and waiting for me, and I had zero chance of escaping her manic desire to turn me into a real doll as dad put it. You're only 5 feet 7 inches and 130 pounds, which means that by adding some padding, you'll be just perfect as a girl. You're not too big and not too small, but before we can begin, we'll have to do something about those hairy arms and legs, so strip down and we'll get started. About an hour later I was standing there hairless, wearing a pair of pink panties while mom laced me into what she called a corslet. When she decided that it was tight enough, she used some small breast forms to fill in the cups, which also gave me a small bit of very natural-looking cleavage. Then a padded panty brief, pantyhose and finally, a simple pullover dress. Once I had it on, mom did my makeup and fixed my hair using a fall, then and only then was I allowed to look in the mirror. This is just for now honey, to help you get used to being a girl. On Saturday morning we'll start early enough that I'll be able to do your hair a bit better, and we'll do your nails. Slip on those shoes and come help me with dinner. It felt strange to walk around in a dress, but I managed to almost get used to it and by the time dad got home, I had also touched up my lipstick and added perfume. One look was all it took for dad to realize that by telling mom to make me a real doll, that he had no clue about the way I would look as a girl. Just to provoke him a little, and all in fun, I called him daddy, then kissed him on the cheek, leaving a red lipstick print. After he got done blushing, mom and I set the table and we had dinner. That's when dad and I found out what mom had in mind. 
since dress sizes are almost never accurate, Renee and I are going out tomorrow night to find just the right dress. She'll have to try it on, of course, because nobody would buy a dress like that unless they tried it on, and given the way she looks, that shouldn't be a problem. The shoes and a handbag will have to match, but we can get them dyed to match the dress if we have to. Jewelry and a nice nail color, plus more lingerie. Not a lot, but some. Turning to me, I also bought you a skirt and blouse that you can wear tomorrow. It'll be easier when you're trying on dresses. You expect me to go out like this? And try on dresses? I'll have everything ready for you when you get home. If you don't dilly-dally, we can be home by nine. That wasn't any answer, but mom had already decided, so as far as she was concerned, it didn't require any discussion, and there wasn't any. All dad did was shrug his shoulders and look into his plate. I think he had the first inkling that telling mom to turn me into a real doll wasn't going the way he expected. The next day when I got home, mom was, as promised, ready and waiting. That time I wore a skirt that was above my knees and a plain white blouse with my gym shoes when we headed for the mall. I knew that I looked okay, it was just, strange to be walking across the parking lot with a breeze blowing up between my legs. Our very first stop was one of those stores that sell only wedding and prom dresses. Mom went right to work, picking out several that she liked, and the two of us went into the changing booth. The first two made me look awful, the third was okay, but the wrong color for me according to mom, the fourth to small, the fifth fit and was the right color, but. We'll have to adjust your cleavage a bit in order to make it look right on you, but I like this one honey, mom said. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess. Good. We'll get this one. I carried the peach-colored dress when we left the shop. When mom mentioned dyed shoes, I figured that I would try on a pair of shoes that were already the right color, but that isn't how it works. I tried on the shoes all right, then mom snipped a piece of material from inside the dress and gave it to the lady. Both the shoes and handbag would match the dress, and we could pick them up on Thursday night. Then it was on to the jewelry shop where I had my other ear pierced and we bought some silver dangly earrings with a matching choker necklace, two rings, and a bracelet. By the time we got home I was worn out, but mom seemed invigorated and wanted me to model the dress for dad, but I declined, telling her that I wanted it to be a surprise. She actually gave in, and I went to get ready for bed. On Saturday morning after breakfast, mom insisted that I start getting ready. For special occasions girls like to take their time getting ready, so I want you to jump in the tub and shave off all the hair on your arms and legs again, and be extra careful not to nick yourself, then wash your hair. I'll be up when you're done and help you rub in a skin lotion that I know you'll like. Now, go do what I told you. My skin was so slick and smooth that the sensation of it gave me the goosebumps. Mom came in and rubbed in a sweet-smelling skin lotion that made my skin feel softer and smoother if that was possible, then together we went into my room. Can you do something about that? That was my manhood. I folded it down, hiked the panties up tight, and turned to face her. Put the skirt and blouse on and come into my room so I can do your hair. Mom started putting rollers in my hair, winding them tight and spraying them with something, then she trimmed my hair in several places. When she was done with that, she took me to the kitchen and started in on my nails, making them rounder and thinner looking before she painted the color on. A pale reddish-orange to match the dress was the color she decided on, then put on three coats, letting each coat dry thoroughly before she applied the next. By then it was mid-afternoon, and we had a bite to eat before she and I went back to her bedroom so she could finish my hair. Mom attached the fall and took out the rollers before she started to brush them together. When she was done there was no way to tell where my hair started and the fall began, and I had long curly hair that fell to my shoulders with short bangs. Watching in the mirror, she added a pair of silver and rhinestone barrettes that pulled the hair away from my face a little and would reveal my earrings. Telling me to do it myself, Mom directed while I did my own makeup, using foundation and powder, two colors of eyeshadow, eyeliner on the upper lid, eye pencil under each eye, then blusher. Actually, I did look pretty good. Then I was once again laced into the corslet, but not before Mom used some tape to draw my pecs together, and after she added the breast forms, I had more cleavage than I thought was possible. 
Then came the padded brief, pantyhose, the two petticoats and the dress, which was sleeveless, cut low in front, and had a low back. Once mom zipped it up and I got a chance to look, I was almost speechless. Mom fastened the necklace while I put in the earrings and slipped on the bracelet. The shoes looked great with the dress, but before I could say anything, mom used some blusher between my boobs, which only gave the illusion that I had more than was there. By the time I used the perfume and put on the lipstick, mom had filled my purse and stood staring at me. You're so pretty, Renee. Mom had used the name we had chosen for me. Thanks, mom. Let's go find your father. Let's see if he's as surprised as we are. Dad was, in a word, stunned, but after he got over the initial shock, he got the car and drove me to the school. A lot of girls were also dolled up, so I didn't stick out, and nobody recognized me as one of the boys. The pink ticket I got put me on the girl's side of the room, and I made my way to an empty table, passing my best friend on the way. He turned and looked at me, but without one sign that he knew who I was. It was more like a wolf eyeing a hunk of meat. As I sat down I was very careful to do what mom told me, using my hands and walking like a girl. I even sat there with my hands folded on my lap. I was soon joined by five other girls, all talking about who they thought the boys dressed as girls were. They asked me, and I made my guesses, but in truth, none of us really knew. They certainly didn't pick me, and I sat there sort of smugly gloating to myself. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention please? We all turn to the stage. In the past we have always let you guess who is a boy and who is a girl, then announce the results, but this year we are having the dance first, then we'll have everyone here walk across the stage. Then you may vote. If any one of the students participating are not named correctly, we will not tell who they are. Remember, you must name the person, then give their actual name in order to eliminate them. Have a great time. Well, Kathy said, I know all of those girls over there, so I know they are really girls, but I don't know you Renee, except you have just the greatest figure, and those boobs are as real as mine, so you can't be one of the boys. Yeah, said Jackie. I agree with Kathy. I wish I had boobs like that. That's only, interrupted Michelle with a giggle, so Mike would have more fun in your bra. Just then the music started, and our table was quickly surrounded by the other girls' boyfriends, taking them to the dance floor. I just sat there content to watch, when a familiar face walked up and asked me to dance. It was the wolf, my best friend. I wasn't sure what to do, but I knew that just sitting there like a lump would give me away, so I took his hand and let him lead me to the dance floor. I'm James Ermintops, and you are... Renee. Renee Stickney. I know a Stickney. Ralph. Any relation? Some, he's sort of a cousin. You smell great Renee, I like it, whatever it is. It's Chanel. Jim held me tight enough that it was easy to follow him without killing his feet, and not once did he ever suggest in any way that he knew who I was. After the music paused, I rejoined the other girls at the table, unable to suppress a grin. I had done it. I had faked out my best friend. The other girls were talking about guys, pointing at some they thought were hunky, then they asked me about Jim. I don't know, he just asked me to dance. We've never met before. Before I could say anything else, a guy I didn't know walked up and asked me to dance. Since there were 1,700 students in our school, you couldn't know everyone, and some you'd never see, so when I didn't recognize him, I thought nothing of it. Taking his hand, he and I started dancing. Just a bit taller than I was in heels, he was also whiter than me, and not bad looking either. Hi. I'm Robert. Renee. I haven't seen you before. You look great by the way. Thanks. I've never seen you before either. Going with anyone? No I told him, which was true, as a girl or a guy. I was unattached. You have a ride home? My dad is coming to pick me up. That's no fun Renee. Let me take you home. Playing the girl all the way. But what if you're only interested in? I'm only interested in getting to know you better Renee, that's all. Let me take you home and I'll prove it. I'll have to call and ask, but... 
Let's go over there. You can use my cell phone. My dad was shocked when I told him that Robert wanted to drive me home, but he agreed only after I assured him it was nothing more than a ride home. Why I agreed to let him take me home I didn't exactly know, except that I felt some very strange vibes when he held me. It was almost as if I were attracted to him, but that was impossible, and I knew it. Robert and I stayed together almost all the rest of the evening, and the other guys saw that, which meant that they wouldn't interfere. The one time I had to leave Robert was when the call of nature beat on me and I had to find my way to the ladies' room. I had never been in one before, but figured it couldn't be that much different. On the way top the ladies' room, Kathy walked up beside me. It looks like you caught one Renee. Yeah, he's real nice. His name is Robert. Going to the can? Can't wait, Kathy. One of the things mom showed me was how to gather up that dress and use the bathroom. I know, it sounds easy, but holding up that amount of material, getting situated, and relieving oneself was a whole lot different than unzip and go. I was glad that I had the practice, because I managed to get into the stall, straighten myself out, touch up my lipstick and get out without a lot of fuss. Thankfully, none of the girls decided I was one of the guys in a dress. Robert was waiting for me when I stepped out of the ladies, and together we walked back to the table just as they started calling out the names. Alphabetical, I was near the end, and when the parade was over, the voting began. The teachers must not have been able to contain themselves, because there were 46 students, half boys as girls, the other half girls as boys. When the voting was done, 38 students had been named as imposters, 25 correctly identified by their real names. That left 8 unnamed at all, and 13 incorrectly identified. I was one of the 8 unnamed. I was overjoyed and dismayed at the same time, not being figured out as a boy in a dress was great, but then what? Robert would think that I was a girl, and be able to do what girls do. And what about my celebrity status? Robert and I danced some more, and as we moved around, I could see most of the kids that had been named standing together on the sidelines. Some of the guys looked fantastic as girls, and some of the girls made better boys than some of the guys. Later as Robert walked me to his car. Can I come see you tomorrow, Renee? We'll get a pizza or something. I didn't answer right away, wondering what to say other than no, when. Renee, I don't know about you, but dancing with you gave me the chills all over, and I feel like we should be together. Didn't you feel that too? When he asked me that I wanted to say yes, but held back, since boys don't date other boys or go together, but he had hit the nail right on the head. I did feel that same sensation about him. He drove me home, pulling up in front of the house, then running around the car to open my door. Taking me by the hand, he helped me to my feet, then onto the sidewalk. Before I could do a thing, I found his lips on mine, his arms around me holding me tightly. I felt a shudder go through me, saw him smile, then. I was right Renee, you feel the same way I do. I'll be over at, two. We'll have a pizza and talk. Dad opened the front door just as we reached the porch, so I introduced them and slipped inside the house. I raced to my room with a serious conflict going inside my head. One, I was a boy. Two, Robert was a boy who had kissed me. And three, I had liked it a lot. Mom came in and unzipped the dress then helped me get undressed, but when she wanted to take the fall out, I said no. Why is that dear? Is it that young man that brought you home? He asked me out. And what did you tell him? Nothing, Mom. Honest. But, he'll be here to pick me up tomorrow at two. We're going out for pizza. Then we'll make sure that you look just as nice as you do right now. Mom. I'm not a girl. Remember? I can't go. What I mean is. But you let him kiss you, and you had your arms wrapped around his neck pretty tight, Renee, so maybe he thinks you meant it. But. It's okay, honey. Every girl likes to feel that she's pretty, especially for her first big dance. Having a handsome young man after her can make a girl forget things, like you did. Now, you get washed up, and in the morning we'll get you all pretty again. You're not mad at me? No, dear, I'm not mad at you. Sometimes we get caught up in things. It happens. 
Dad will hit the roof, Mom. Maybe, maybe not. He saw you kissing that boy too, and he didn't yell at you when you came in, did he? I'll talk to him. Now I'll wash your face and go to bed. I'll admit that I lay there in bed wide awake, wondering how I was going to end something that never should have happened. I suppose I could have become myself and let Robert know who I was, but for some reason I just couldn't do that. I liked the way I looked as a girl, and with all of the other girls accepting me as one of their own, I really didn't want to quit quite so soon. I must have slept hard when I finally dropped off, because the next thing I knew, Mom was shaking me awake, the sun filling the window. Get up, honey. Come have something to eat. I had some cereal, waiting for someone to tell me something, even to take the fall out, but neither Mom nor Dad said a thing until I had finished rinsing out my dishes. We're going to let you go out with this boy, Dad said, but you'll have to tell him the truth. There isn't anything to gain by lying about who you really are, is there? No, sir. I'll tell him, promise. Fine. You better go get ready then. I did my own makeup again, but less intense, then got dressed in the skirt and blouse with my gym shoes. Mom did my hair, and after I added perfume and lipstick, she gave me a purse to carry. Dad said that I looked nice, and when Robert showed up to get me, he even smiled. Robert and I had pizza, then went for a short drive. On the way, I asked him to take me home. But why? I thought that we, what's the matter Renee? I'm one of the unnamed boys that dressed as a girl last night Robert, I'm so sorry, but. His laughter filled the car, which grew higher in pitch the more he laughed. He drove into a parking lot and stopped the car. You want me to get out? Right here? No. Of course not. Renee, my name isn't Robert, it's Roberta. I'm one of the girls that dressed as a boy. That's when it hit me. Why I tingled all over. This is terrific, Renee. We can be a couple. A boy and girl couple. But, with me as the girl, right? Well, yes, but, I'll be the boy so why not? My dad is going to freak right out. I'm a girl, and I can prove it to your mom if he wants me to. What about your parents? What are they going to say? Nothing. I've been dressing as a boy all my life. This is just great, Renee. Then he swept me into his arms and kissed me again, sticking his tongue halfway down my throat, and I eagerly kissed him back. Then I told him that maybe we should talk to my parents. The thought of dressing as a girl just so I could have a relationship with a girl dressed as a boy was just as crazy as it sounds, and I can't even say why I thought it was all right. Since I had never dressed as a girl before the previous event, I couldn't explain, even to myself, why I even considered it. Yet the thrill of it all must have turned my brain into mush, because I didn't even think about it when we walked into the house hand in hand, then stood there as Robert told my parents what had happened. That he was a she, and since I was a boy, our dating, while unconventional, was perfect for the two of us. Then he offered to prove things to mom, who, surprising me, and dad I think, agreed. When they came out of the bedroom, mom was grinning. She's a girl, no doubt about that, mom said. But if we let you two date, then? Then Renee will be here to stay, mom told dad, at least for a while anyway. Let me get this straight. Our son will dress as a girl, just so he can date a girl that's dressing as a boy? Doesn't any of that strike any of you as odd? But it's not like you thought it was dad. Robert is a girl, so why not? This is ridiculous. Why can't you two just be yourselves? Sir Robert said, I've been dressing in boys' clothes for as long as I can remember. I only wear a dress if I have to, like for a wedding. My parents don't like it much but since it doesn't hurt anyone, they let me wear what I want. I'll think about it, but I can tell you too this much, I don't like seeing my son running around dressed as a girl. We'll talk about this, mom said, but for right now, I guess we can let you have the rest of the weekend, but on Monday, you'll have to be back to yourself, okay? That okay with me? I said joyfully, and much to dad's chagrin. Can we go to my house? I want my folks to meet Renee. They agree, Dad asked, with you dressing like a boy? Isn't that what you said? Yes, sir. 
I've always dressed this way when I could, usually on weekends, but yeah, they let me be myself. Dad looked at the two of us a moment, then, okay I guess, you can go, but I want you home by dinner time. Thanks dad. Robert and I left the house, almost running into our neighbor on the way out. I went around her, then Robert and I drove to his house. I felt giddy, and I wasn't sure why. Not having dated at all, and never having dressed as a girl before, I was confused to find out that I didn't mind at all. The fact that Robert was actually a girl meant that we were legal, but that did not lessen the fact that if I agreed to the outrageous idea that we could pull it off, I would have to perfect my ability to look, sound, and act like a girl on top of always looking like one. The fact that Robert wanted me to meet his parents didn't strike me as odd at the time. It was only later that day when I figured it out. Robert took me by the hand as we went in his house, seeing his mother first. She looked at us holding hands and her eyes went wide with a frown to compliment it, but she quickly gathered her control and smiled. Hello there. Mom, this is Renee. Hello Renee. Come in and sit down. Once we were seated. Mom, Renee is like me. She's a girl, anyone can see that, his mom said quickly. No mother. Renee is a boy. She's one of the girls that went unnamed the other night at the party. No. A boy? Yes ma'am, I said, I can prove it if you like. No dear, I, that won't be necessary. I'll take your word for it. If you're willing to prove it, I guess I can take your word for it. Do your parents know what you're doing? That you're dressed this way? Yes ma'am. They told me it was okay for this weekend, but I'll have to be myself on Monday for school. I would hope so. You look so. If you went to school this way, I doubt anyone would know you. That was the idea mom, Robert said, and Renee did it so well that nobody picked her out. They didn't pick you either, did they? No. Renee, his mom asked, can I call and talk to your mother? You don't mind, do you? No, ma'am. Robert nodded his head towards the back, and we left the room. He got us something to drink before we went out and sat in the backyard. This might be real tough on you, Robert said, it's easy for me to look like a guy, I have the build, so all I have to do is cut my hair short and wrap my boobs. You have to the hard stuff. It's not so bad, and I kind of like it. Your dad didn't sound real happy. Maybe he won't let you do this. I guess I don't know. But maybe, because you're really a girl, he'll let me do it once in a while. I hope so. Who was that lady we passed when we left your house? That was Mrs. Sutton. She lives across the street. Her daughter is in some kind of mental place. She's about six years older than us. Heather had some kind of infection, and after that she was never quite right. I haven't seen her for almost three years now. I wonder what she wanted. Her and my mom are good friends. Who knows? Maybe it's because she saw us together. Maybe. I don't care anyway. Just then Robert's mom walked out of the house. Renee? Your mother wants you to come home. Robert took me home, dropping me off at the street. I ran in the house only to see my parents and Mrs. Sutton sitting there. I didn't know what to do and started for my room when Mrs. Sutton asked me to stay. You look very nice, my dear. Ah, uh, thanks. Your mother tells me that you might need some things. It was hard for me to admit it, but Heather will never be released, and I have all of her stuff still in her bedroom. It's time I got rid of some of it. What she's trying to tell you is that Heather's condition isn't getting any better, honey, and if you can use anything of hers... That's assuming they even fit you of course, Mrs. Sutton said. Looking right at Dad, I said, but you told me that I couldn't. We're still talking about it, but if she is going to get rid of them anyway. Does this mean that you're going to let me dre? It only means that we might as well be prepared, just in case. Dad sounded, frustrated? Let's the three of us go and find out, Mom said quickly. And that's how I ended up with a closet full of skirts and blouses, tops and jeans, slacks, coats, dresses, even lingerie, slips and nightgowns, that kind of thing. 
As I put things away I wondered just what was going on, since Dad was clearly not in favor of me dressing as a girl, even if Robert was a natural girl. If my radar was working right, I might never use all the stuff in my closet. Mrs. Sutton wanted us to take everything, but Mom wouldn't allow it, not even the earrings. Only necklaces, barrettes and bracelets. Unsanitary, she said. I changed into one of the dresses I had just put away, the gray sheath dress with the round neck. My sense was that Mom might talk him into letting me do it once in a great while, but then, why all the clothes? I had not been dressing as a girl for more than three days, so I myself wasn't positive that I wanted to continue doing it, except for that nagging feeling that the sensations I had every time I was dressed were trying to tell me something. It made me feel good about myself, something I sorely missed as a guy. I had friends, sure, but at 5 feet 7 inches and 130 pounds, I didn't have the bulk, let alone the will to play on a team. The only thing I was really good at was creating web pages. At the age of 15, 16 and a few months, I was well aware of my limitations. It was during the party when it hit me that as a girl, I had people talking to me as an equal, not some low-life nerd, and of course, Robert made me feel wanted. If I had to dress like a girl to feel that way, I discovered that I was more than willing to do just that. Coming to that conclusion made me wonder if that was the only reason I liked dressing up. Or was it more than that? Did I just want to feel like one of the in crowd, or did I really like it because it made me feel better about myself? More complete. Adding lipstick first, I took off the gym shoes and socks, then put on some pantyhose and my only pair of heels, the peach ones. My legs didn't look so bad to me. Grabbing the perfume, I put some on, gathered myself after taking one last look, and walked into the kitchen. My dad was sitting there. He and I stared at each other, the strain in the air palpable. I do not like this, you know that don't you? You thought it was fun, you even told mom to turn me into a real doll. She did, and now you don't like the way I look? No, it's not that, of course I like the way you look. That was unexpected on my part, but it's not that. It's the fact that you like doing this. I also don't know about this girl that calls herself Robert. What's with that? He told me he's been dressing as a boy almost all his life, Dad. That may be, but you're a boy. Yeah. And Robert is a girl. So what if I'm the one wearing the skirt? As long as we all know it, then. Can't you see that what kind of trouble this can lead to? I thought that you... I guess I never thought that you wanted to wear girls' clothes. I didn't. It just happened, Dad. How was I supposed to know that I would look this way? Or that I might like it? I can make you change, you know. Yeah, I know that. Your mother talked to Robert's mother. Did you know that? I gave her the number, Dad. They both seem to think it's what your mother calls the perfect solution. I wasn't aware there was a problem that needed to be solved, but your mother tells me that now that you seem to have found out that you like to dress as a girl, there's probably no way to stop you. Is that right? I shrugged my shoulders. What I should do is forbid this, put an end to it right now. But? But then I would have to put up with you becoming surly and your mother nagging me at the same time. So, I have decided that I'm going to let you do this, for a while anyway but just on the weekends. We'll just see how this all turns out. My guess is that you'll fall flat on your face, but that might be a better lesson than anything else I could do. That said, and since you seem to want to do this so badly, you will dress as a girl for the entire weekend, from Friday after school until Monday when you return to school. We'll try that and see how you like it. Okay, Dad, whatever you say. Since there wasn't any way that I would go to school as a girl, from Friday night to Monday morning was perfect. I didn't think that dad knew what he had done, and I wasn't about to tell him. Mom wasn't anywhere to be found, so I went back to my room. I wanted to try on more clothes and see how I looked. I really liked the short skirts with the pullover tops, but also some of the dresses. I was wearing the tan and gray skirt without a blouse when mom walked in on me. It seems, she said in a huff, that your father went ahead and made his decision without talking to me first, and you agreed. You mad at me, mom? 
you're damned right I'm mad. At both of you. But, I thought, you, the clothes. Those clothes are handy, but I was thinking that maybe we would let you play dress up once or twice a month, not every weekend. And that's only if we don't have anything planned. I don't have to. Your father just told me that you'll be dressing as a girl every weekend, no matter what, and he's going to enforce it. Whether you or I like it. Have you got the slightest clue what that means? Mom, I. It means, if I know your father, that you'll be on vacation, the family reunion, and whatever else, dressed as a girl. And you can believe it or not, but he'll go out of his way to make sure that you are on display as often as possible, in as many situations as he can manage. He didn't do you any favors, honey, and trust me, you had better get real good at becoming a girl, because I think everything is going to hit the fan in one big hurry. But I thought you liked me as a girl. I think you're cute, and yes, it was fun playing mother-daughter, but this, this is going to get out of hand, and I'm telling you right now to be prepared for anything. She paused, then, honey, I know that with Robert you feel like a girl, and while it might technically be okay for you two to date, you can't help but meet kids that know both of you, and if you're dressed as a girl, what then? What if someone recognizes you? And what about the family? Your grandfather is going to have a cow. Plopping down on the bed, she looked at me. I don't have to dress up mom, and dad can't make me, not if I don't want to. Okay, what if everyone is here and he says, why don't you go put on the pink dress you like so much? What then? You know that everyone will ask what's going on, and my bet is that he'll tell them. Unless. Unless what? Unless you make sure that you do what he wants. Overwhelm him with femininity. Be more girl than a girl. Drown him in as many girlish ways as you can think of. Be giddy, call him daddy, walk, talk and act like a very feminine girl all the time. Wear clothes that you know he won't like, then pout when he tells you to change. Go all out and do it every time you're dressed as a girl, and maybe even when you're not. But you sounded angry just a minute ago. Are you mad at me? I didn't make any rules, dad did. I'm, I guess not. I'm not mad at you, except you knew that I wanted to be part of that discussion. But Dad said you two had talked it over. I didn't know. Mom, I'll change and quit if that's what you want. I like it, but I don't want to be in the middle here. I'm only doing what I was told by Dad. I know you are. This is really between your father and I, but since he has already told you what to do, I guess I'll have to go along with it just like you will, unless you're ready to quit altogether, and completely that is. I put on a blouse and some shoes, then stayed in my room while my parents hashed it out. I could quit, that much I knew, but I also knew that I didn't want to do that, which didn't leave me many choices. It was almost two hours before mom called me for dinner. Not one word was said about my dressing as a girl, and after dinner I went back to my room and undressed, took a shower, and washed away all traces of makeup and perfume. In the morning I was at the bus stop, ready for school as if nothing had happened. The talk was all about the elusive eight unnamed people that had managed to fool everyone, and who they might be. I only knew two of them, myself and Robert. I saw him a few times between classes, but we never spoke. The day dragged on, my only thoughts about being Renee again. It was tough, especially when I watched the girls as they chatted together, walked between classes or flirted with the guys. The next day and the one after that were only slightly better, and by Friday I was on edge eager to change and become a girl once again. I left the school and headed for the bus, but mom was there. Hi. What's up mom? Why are you here? We have to talk honey. Get in. Once I was in the car, your father has invited some people over for a barbecue this weekend. People he works with. Now, you can go stay with your grandparents, or you can stay home, but if you do, you know what that means. Yeah. Renee will have to be there. That's right. I'll give you the choice. Home, or at grandpa's. That's easy, mom. I'll stay home. I've decided to do what you said. I'll be as feminine as I can be. Maybe dad won't like it. 
Then again, he may take it as a sign that you really enjoy being a girl more than he thought. Maybe, but maybe not mom. Well, the one thing you have to have is shoes, so let's go home so you can change, and after dinner you and I will see about getting you some shoes. That's exactly what happened. Right after dinner, mom and I took off to get me some shoes. Mom let me look around, but the two of us picked out the shoes together. Heels in white, red, and black, flats in white, black and taupe, plus sandals and new gym shoes. Surprising me, we went in the mart next to the shoe store and picked up some shorts, plus what mom called a romper suit. It was nearing seven, but once we were in the car, mom asked me about wearing the corslet all the time. It has to be hot, and since most girl wouldn't wear one to a picnic, or most other places for that matter, we'll have to find you something better to use for boobs. Let's go to that shop by the grocery. They sell things for women that have had mastectomies, maybe they can help you. Besides, maybe you'll be able to provoke your father into relenting a bit, especially if he thinks you're starting to become more girl than he thought you might. As soon as we walked in the shop a lady met us, and once mom told her that we were looking for a set of her premier breast forms, she led us to the back, then looking right at mom, told her to go ahead and take her blouse off. Oh, they're not for me. They're for Renee. I have had many girls come in here, the lady said slowly, wanting help, especially when nature is taking too long. Is this really necessary? I mean, in time. I don't think you understand. Renee is my son, and I doubt that he'll develop breasts any time soon. Oh, I see. This is quite really quite unusual. Can you, will you, help her? This is different, but of course I can help her. Take your blouse off, my dear. I'll need to confirm the size. Once she took measurements, she consulted a chart, then left us for a moment, returning with four boxes. All she did was hold them up against my skin, finally picking one that she said as an almost perfect match. Is this for long-term wear? Or maybe something less. Weekends, mom said. The woman attached them using a glue that smelled like contact cement, but when she was done, those boobs looked almost real. I was watching in the mirror as she used a bit of makeup to cover the seams, and voila. I had boobs. It turned out that the glue would last about two or three days, and would break down in hot water. When I left, I carried the glue in a small bag, enough the lady told me, that it would last about four months. It felt really weird having boobs bouncing on my chest, even as small as they were. I was in small B cup the lady told me. With a caution from mom, we decided not to say a thing to dad about the breast forms, only the shoes, so when we got home, I went to my room and quickly undressed to look at my brand new accoutrements. Boy bait I had heard Kathy call them. I put on a nightgown and played on the computer a while before I hit the sack. The next day was going to be a Lulu for someone, and I hoped it would be Dad, because otherwise I was going to be the one on the grill. A last fleeting thought I had before falling asleep was, if I was on the grill, what did burning silicone and foam rubber smell like? Without going to breakfast, I filled the tub and did my best to remove all the hair that had grown back, used the skin lotion Mom gave me, and went back in my room to get dressed. After I had panties on and I was well tucked away, I put on the bra that mom had bought at the shop where we got the boobs, and started on my makeup. Since it was a picnic, mom had told me to use just foundation and powder with some eyeliner and blusher. The romper suit was light blue and white checked, with a white band at the top and a white elastic band at the waist. After pulling on the padded brief, I stepped into it just as mom walked in, she zipped it up then tied the straps in a bow at the back of my neck. When I looked, I saw that it was about as long as a pair of shorts, but the bra had pushed my boobs up a little and gave me a more adult figure. I put on the white ankle socks and new gym shoes, my white earrings. I had removed the fall to wash my hair, but she quickly attached it, then brushed my hair all together. White barrettes to hold it back, some pale red lipstick and a dab of perfume, and I was ready. My shoulders were bare, and since the romper suit wasn't split, like with shorts, it was like wearing a very short skirt. I went out of the room and into the kitchen, got something to eat, then meandered out on the deck where Dad was starting to set up. Hi, Daddy. He rump. How do I look, Daddy? Is this okay? 
I think it's just the cutest outfit, don't you? What's with this daddy crap? Well, you did tell me to be a girl, didn't you? And don't girls call their dads daddy? Your boobs look bigger. Is there anything I should know? Mom bought them for me. They look really real daddy, and it's nice to have my own boobs for a change. Your own, and your mother bought them? Last night. Can I help daddy? No, I'll get it. I had pushed him just about as far as I dared, and went back in the house with a grin on my face. If dad was going to explode, that was the day, because I was going to make it happen. I had to. If what mom said was true, that he might try to exploit his advantage by embarrassing me, then I would have to head him off, and I had the perfect way. He knew about the breast forms because I told him, but what he didn't know was that in all the stuff I had been given by Mrs. Sutton was a swimsuit, a red one. I planned on waiting until everyone was well fed and talking, then go change into it and walk outside. Having a pool was the excuse I had, and when he saw me in that suit, I didn't think he would have the nerve to try and tell everyone that I was a boy. I didn't tell mom about my plan because she might just tell me not to do it. People started arriving, and I directed them to the deck where both mom and dad were waiting. One of dad's long-time friends arrived, and as I led him to the deck, Where's Ralph? He's unavailable today. Well, who are you? I'm Renee. You look like part of the family. You related? Yeah, I was invited to fill in for Ralph. Dad looked up when we walked out, smiled at his friend, glanced at me, then went to get something to drink. He was ignoring me. Everyone was eating, laughing, talking and so on, so I slipped up to my room to change. I was extra careful to make sure that I had no unsightly bulges, put the swimsuit on, and looked at my reflection from the mirror. The suit was made of that stretchy material, which meant that it hugged me almost like a coat of paint, and with my breasts not quite, but daringly exposed, complete with small nipples, I knew that I would get his attention and probably make him rethink whatever he had planned. I slipped on a pair of sandals and started out the door when mom and another lady turned the corner and saw me. Renee, mom said. You planning on using the pool? I thought I would, is that okay? Well, yes, of course, but… And who is this? The other lady asked. This is Renee. She's here for the weekend. I'm sure that our son would like to meet you, Renee. He's out on the deck right now. Maybe, Mom interrupted, you might want to find a wrap skirt to put on for now? Sure. I said, dreading the fact that someone had brought a boy my age over. I found a white skirt and pulled it on, then walked out of my room with Mom and the other lady. The three of us went outside, which is just when I heard Dad say, You know, Ralph has a new hobby, he's been. Honey? Dad turned at the sound of mom's voice and saw us standing there, but focused on me, my chest specifically, and shut right up. Can Renee use the pool? Well, I, what I mean is. Dad was sputtering, and I knew that I had, with great luck, just managed to head off a disaster. Yeah, sure, anything she wants I guess. Oh, look, Garrett, come meet Renee. Her son smiled and shook my hand, then his eyes wandered before coming back to my face. He was about 6'3 with short cropped brown hair and green eyes. Just looking at him, the perfect specimen for a guy, I felt like I always did as a guy. Inadequate. But as a girl, well, I could actually feel the power a girl has over guys pushing its way into my brain. When I smiled back I felt as if I could make him do anything. Did I hear that you were thinking of using the pool? Maybe later, but yeah. Great. I brought my own suit, so maybe I can join you? Why not? Everyone was milling around when mom came over and took me by the arm. Just what are you doing? Can't I use the pool? Of course, but… Well, this is the only suit that I have. It's this or nothing mom. But that makes you look… Good? Yes, and that's the problem. Why didn't you ask me first? Because you would have said no. And besides, did you see when dad almost swallowed his tongue? He was about to tell that guy over there that I had a new hobby. Want to guess what that is? Yes, 
but that young man is all over your father now. He wants to ask you out. I can say no, and dad can't do a thing about it mom. Maybe, but have you thought about what the suit will do when it gets wet? What? It's just a swimsuit. You'll see. Go ahead and use the pool if you like. With dad watching, I slipped off the skirt and sandals, then walked over and slid into the slightly chilly water. I had to wait a bit for my body to adjust to the water, then I just waited around for a little while. I didn't want to get my hair wet, and stayed in the shallow end. I saw Garrett walk out of the house in his swimsuit, and all I could do was watch as he also slid into the pool. He looked like the kind of guy my dad had always wanted for a son. My dad and I had reached a stalemate in our struggle, he wanted me to quit dressing as a girl, and while I only wanted to dress up once in a while, he had also forced the issue. He had also known that Garrett would be there, yet he had deliberately kept that tidbit to himself, hoping that he could embarrass me, or maybe put me in a position that would make me want to quit. With Garrett smiling at me, all I could do was stay in the shallow end and hope that Garrett only wanted to talk. I saw Dad glance at me, frown, and turn away, just as Garrett drew closer. You're just visiting I hear. Yeah, for the weekend. Too bad. I was kind of hoping we might go see a show or something. I already have a boyfriend, and I don't think he would like that. If you decide to dump him, keep me in mind will you? Sure, I said with a grin. I'm getting a little cold Garrett, I think I'll go change. When I stepped out of the pool, while I couldn't see it, I could tell that it was sticking to me even tighter than before. I also couldn't see that the wetsuit was sticking tight to the built-in nipples on the breast forms, and the way it stuck to my smooth groin. I grabbed a towel, quickly patted myself, having to bend at the waist to get my legs, which let my breasts hang free. I saw Dad staring, then I ran in the house and up to my room. I peeled off the suit and dried off some more before I got dressed in that same romper suit again. By the time I went back on the deck dad looked like he was going to blow a gasket and I stayed away from him. By the time everyone had left, I knew that dad and I were going to go at it. There wasn't any doubt in my mind. None. About an hour later. I want to talk to you. Now. Sure, daddy. Don't call me that. Okay dad, whatever. That display you put on this afternoon, that was uncalled for. And why is that? Mom asked. Yeah, I said a little testily, you were about to tell someone who I was. My little hobby I heard you say, just as I walked out of the house. And you're on me about protecting myself? By wearing that, that skin-tight swimsuit? And what about those? They looked real enough to me, and I'm sure that Garrett thought so too. I saw you flirting with him. What the hell has gotten into you anyway? Have you gone sissy on me and turned to liking boys now? No. As a matter of fact I said angrily, in a louder voice, none of this would have happened at all, except that you demanded it. You're the one that told me to dress as a girl all the time on the weekends, then you went and invited all those people over, including Garrett, knowing exactly how I would be dressed. You tried to set me up dad. So you could make me look real bad, maybe even worse, but it backfired on you because I figured out what you were doing. So don't try and blame all this on me, all I did was what you told me to do, and now you don't like it. And I didn't flirt with Garrett. I was pissed and they both knew it. I should knock you into the middle of next week for talking to me that way dad said as he stood up. Maybe you should, I spit back, maybe you'll get off my back. That's enough, mom shouted. I've had enough of you two fighting. Sit, she told dad. Renee has every right to feel like she's being abused by you. So what if our son found out he likes to dress as a girl? What harm would have come if we just let things take their normal course? This all might have blown over quickly, but no, you decided to make her dress up every weekend, and I know for a fact that you planned on exposing her today, only that didn't work because I made sure it wouldn't. You didn't ask me, or even talk to me about making her dress up every weekend like we decided, you just took it upon yourself to do it. Turning to me, and you, I told you to be feminine, not a sex toy. I said to be the girl you look like. I told you to be feminine, not a femme fatale, 
but you did everything in your power to provoke your father to the point of breaking. I am sick and tired of the way you two have been acting, and it's coming to an end, right this instant. After she calmed herself a bit, after that little display this afternoon, the two of you have virtually assured the fact that Renee cannot just disappear, not after all of your friends have met her, did you think of that? She said to Dad. And you, she said looking at me, you made it impossible for anyone to believe that a girl named Renee isn't available. That little show you put on in the pool and when you got out, doesn't leave us very many options, does it? Dad and I were silent as Mom tore us both to shreds, and she had plenty to say. She did admit that while she knew that I liked dressing up, it wasn't the end of mankind as we know it, but she also made it clear that she did not raise her son to be a girl. She said that because of our actions, herself included, we were stuck with the possibility, or even the probability, that I would have to appear again, and be just as feminine. Dad took it the hardest, because he set this all in motion when he saw Robert and I kissing. He leapt to a conclusion that was both unjust and unwise, and simply refused to back away from it. For me, even though I didn't mind dressing as a girl one bit, having Dad come down on me like that only made me want to do it more. Mom bought the breast forms, made sure that I had plenty of clothes and knew how to do makeup, then encouraged me to be the girl I looked like. On the other hand, she made no attempt to put a lid on Dad's plans or her encouragement of my newfound hobby. There was plenty of grief for all of us, but the central question remained. Would I be able to keep dressing up? I think, Mom said softly, that we need to come to an agreement. One that we can all live with. Renee, what is it you want? I'd like to be able to become Renee when I want to. And you? Mom asked Dad. I want my son back. Well, there we are. You want to be able to be a girl all the time, she said to me. And you, she said to Dad, want no dressing up at all. The middle is about where we are right now. Every weekend if it's available. Sitting back in her chair, my vote is somewhat less, stringent. I think that Renee should be able to get dressed up on the weekends, without any hassle from you she said to dad, and you, she said to me, will dress in the proper fashion, and I will be the judge of that. Now then, can we agree on that? Yes, I said. No, dad said. Since it's obvious that neither of you plan on changing your tune, I'll settle it for us then. On the weekends, when it's possible of course, Renee will be allowed to dress up, but pay better attention to what she wears. And you, she said to Dad, will not, under any circumstances, put her in danger of discovery like you did today. I won't tolerate any more of this from either of you, is that clear? Nobody said a word as we digested Mom's anger and her edict. That's what it was, an edict. We would do what she said, or we would taste the ugly end of her wrath. Dad was beyond being able to be rational, and stormed out of the room quickly. He and I both knew that if we tested Mom's resolve, we wouldn't like it, neither of us. We were joined at the hip. If he did anything to give me away, I might do something back, and both of us would be in trouble. If he had not been so miserable about it, I might not have pushed the issue so hard. Sure, I liked being a girl, and yes, I might have done it often, but not like he was thinking. Go to your room and change, Mom said to me, I've had all the daughter I can stand for a while. I sat there a moment, then, I told you to go change, and I mean it. Now. The breast forms came off like the lady told me they would, and within a short time I was back to jeans and a tee, just like normal. Dad and I kept our distance for a while, but I was able to wear a skirt and blouse or a dress when I was alone in my room. I never fully dressed up again for over a month. I told Robert what happened, and while he understood, he also urged me to dress up for him. I couldn't, and I told him that. The struggle within my family was only just beginning to ease up. School was a plain drag, and I wanted the summer to arrive so I might have more time to myself. One day over dinner. I was thinking, Mom said softly, that it's time we discussed our summer vacation. That's easy. The mountains, fishing, camping, like always, Dad said. I was thinking of something a bit different. What, Dad and I asked together. 
We have not seen Renee for almost five weeks now, although I know she's been here, in any case, since you two seem to have come to a standoff, I think that it's time we broke the stalemate. What I propose is that we tour the ocean front. There are lots of things to see and do, like all those theme parks, and I want Renee to come with us, for the entire three weeks. That way, she said to Dad, you'll get to see if Renee can actually be a girl for that long a time, and you, she said to me, will know if this is what you really want to do. We'll pack some of your jeans and shirts, so if it becomes too much, you can always put Renee back in the suitcase, but only as a last resort. The ocean? But I thought that you liked camping. Besides, he can prance around all he wants in his dresses while we're in the mountains. But he won't learn anything at all about being a girl, will he? Besides, haven't you figured out by now that Ralph doesn't like camping? Is that true? I thought you. It's okay, Dad, but I'd rather be around people my own age, not camping in some remote wilderness watching you fishing. You want me to agree to let our son dress up as a girl for the three weeks of our vacation? It's time we all found out what each of us needs to know. If Renee only wants to dress up once in a while, we'll know after a short while, won't we? And you will see that having a girl in the family isn't the end of the world, and maybe find a way that you two can get along. But what if he likes it and doesn't want to quit? Then we'll find that out and be able to talk about it better. What if I say I won't do it? I said. Then we'll get rid of all that stuff in your closet and that will be the end of your playing dress up. Mom sounded very firm about it, and I went silent again. Well, what's it going to be? Mom asked us both. I have to say, Dad said sourly, I don't like it one bit, but maybe three weeks as a girl every day, full time, will cure him of the sissy crap. I'll agree, with only one stipulation. He has to do the whole three weeks, even if he decides he doesn't want to. No changing into a boy at any time we're on vacation. Otherwise, no girly stuff to start with. Mom looked over at me, and I slowly nodded my head yes. That meant that starting that Friday night, I was going to become a girl for three entire weeks, in close quarters with my dad, which meant that we would have to come to some kind of mutual agreement, or we would be forever fighting. On my part, I had to do it. Like mom said, I had to know if I really wanted to be a girl all the time, or just be able to dress up once in a while. With a full week before we were to leave, and once dad and I both agreed, she began to make the arrangements, which included a long talk with me. I had to call Robert and tell him that I would not be available for a long time. I had no idea just what my parents had planned, and while he took it well, he understood. My relationship with him died right there. The next morning after dad went to work. I want you to get dressed. Take as long as you need, then we are going shopping. You'll need shorts, jeans, tops, and maybe some summer dresses, although you'll most likely wear the shorts all the time. I started to say something, but she stopped me. Girls do not always wear dresses or skirts. If you're going to do this, then you'll just have to learn how to be a girl no matter what you wear. Now, get ready, and we'll go. I think our first stop will be to have your hair styled. I think it's long enough to get it cut in a style suitable for a girl your age. I spent a few hours getting ready, starting with shaving my arms and legs. With each stroke of the razor I felt I was one step closer to the next inevitable confrontation with my dad, yet I was unable to bring myself to quit, saying no, and possibly avoid what I was sure was going to be another clash. No matter what he said, dad was having just as hard a time accepting me as a girl as I was doing it around him, than trying to make him understand why. Having tried being extra feminine, I knew that wasn't going to work, and being a butch girl wasn't it for me, that left a wide gulf, and I just knew that I had to find that one spot that we could all be happy in. In my room, before I did anything else, I pulled out the instruction sheet that I had found on the internet. Following the sheet exactly, I was able to create not only a smooth front, but also make myself resemble a girl, with all sign of my maleness gone. The tape didn't hurt, but I hoped it would come off just as easily as it went on. From then on I would be sitting down to use the bathroom, but I didn't mind that at all. If anything it only added another layer that continued to confirm how I felt. I pulled on the panties, 
then call for mom to help me with the breast forms. Without a word, mom attached them and left the room. She didn't even comment on the way my panties fit. I took the padded panty brief and removed the padding, then pulled on the brief, stuffing the pads where I wanted them, making myself look rounder and fuller than before. By the time I had makeup on and I was dressed in a skirt and blouse, mom came in and brushed out my hair. After I put on some earrings and lipstick, mom and I left, our first stop the beauty shop. My hair was cut in what mom called a shag, which was below the ears with bangs and a little curl under on the sides. My nails were trimmed and shaped, then painted a soft red before we left for the mall. Mom? Yes? Does dad hate me? Of course not. He's just, he can't understand why you would want to dress like a girl, that's all. But he started all this mom. That's true, he did tell me to make you into a real doll, didn't he? What none of us, yourself included planned on, was having you find out that you liked it. But I don't know why mom. Honest. I know, she said softly, that what you're saying is probably true, and if what you're feeling is making you do this, then we have to find a way to make him understand. Think about this. He didn't even know that you didn't like camping, or fishing, did he? No. Then what makes you think that he's going to understand this? But he doesn't have to be such an asshole about it mom. All I did was what he told me, and you know what he tried to do. That isn't fair. If he had said don't dress up, I wouldn't have, and he knew it. Your father and I talked about that, and I have his promise that he won't do that again, as long as you do your very best to be the girl you look like. That's why I had your hair and nails done today. Now it's up to you. I can do it mom, but what happens when we get home? Do I have to go back to being a guy again? I don't know. I guess it'll depend on what happens while we're on vacation, won't it? But let's not worry about your father right now, let's talk about us. You know, since I have said so before, that I'm also not in favor of you dressing up like a girl, but I'm going along with this so that all of us, you in particular, will find out if you really want to be a girl, or if this is just a playtime thing. But you bought the breast forms. If you didn't want me to do this, then why buy them? I was angry at your father for one, and two, if you were going to go out as a girl, then I wanted you to have every sense of security that we could manage. I did not want you to be found out, which might have led to violence of some kind. As far as I can tell, they were cheap for what we got out of it. That's also the reason I took you off about what your father was going to do at the picnic. He would have destroyed you and made a fool out of himself at the same time if I had let him do that to you. But let's not worry about any of that. Let's just have a fun day shopping, okay? Okay, mom. Our first stop was to get me two more nightgowns and another bra, then it was on to the junior department where I picked out some shorts and tops. Mom added some tops that had the thin shoulder straps, telling me it would be cooler, plus a pair of capri-style slacks. Then we picked out three summer dresses and two out-to-dinner dresses as she called them. I also bought a hot pink tee that had the word princess and sparkle on the front in bright red. Socks and pantyhose, then on to a makeup store to get stuff that matched my skin tone better, and finally, two swimsuits, one that was less tight on me than the one I wore to piss off dad, and one that was a bikini. It was green with white flowers on it. Mom picked that one out by the way. When we got home I took everything to my room, and with mom's help, started setting aside the clothes that I would take on vacation. Later in the day I changed into one of the new summer dresses, and helped mom make dinner. When dad got home and saw me, my hair, makeup and nails all done to perfection, he grinned, patted mom on the can, and kissed me on the cheek. Looking at mom, I wondered if dad had started taking drugs. You look very nice Renee. Really nice. Aw, thanks dad. I have a surprise. What? Mom and I both asked. I have our reservations. I bought a timeshare from a friend at work, and it's in the middle of everything we planned on seeing. Then he went on to explain the costs and so on. I have also decided that Renee should share in the driving, since she'll be getting her license soon enough, and this will be good practice. Then he left to wash up. Well, Mom exclaimed. I wonder what came over him. No clue mom, 
but let's not ask, okay? We left the house Friday at noon. Like mom, I was wearing shorts and a top. Dad drove for about five hours, then mom drove until we stopped for the night. The next morning I wore a skirt and my princess tee, and dad let me drive until we got close to our destination, then he took over. Once we checked in and settled down, the three of us went to the restaurant just down the street. When we were seated, I got promoted, dad said suddenly. Tom just walked up and told me I had been promoted and would start the day we get back. You rat, mom said. Why didn't you tell us? I wanted it to be a surprise, and ah, uh, And what, mom wanted to know. And he has invited us to his house to celebrate. It seems he was very taken with the way Renee, how she handled his son Garrett. She made a nice impression on him, so she has been invited too. This isn't another setup, is it dad, because if it is. Whoa, he said. Take it easy. There's no setup. It's just an invitation. But we all have to go, Mom said. When? Thursday. We have to go home by Thursday? No, he has a second home not far from here. Since there was nothing we could do about it, all Mom and I could do was hope that Dad wasn't lying to us. The next day we started at the big park almost across the street. By noon my shoulders needed help, so Mom put some sun lotion on me and we ate, then stayed at the park until we had exhausted all there was to see. By the time Thursday morning arrived, I knew what I was going to wear, and with mom's approval, I started getting dressed. I wore the strapless bra and the short, sleeveless gray sheath dress with the twin spaghetti straps and my black heels. At mom's suggestion, I also packed the bikini in mom's small bag along with my makeup. Dad let me drive, and we were soon parked in the driveway. Garrett came out, a grin on his face when he saw me. As he took my hand, I saw dad frown. Garrett led us in the house and as our parents gushed about this and that, he took me out to the pool and sat down. You look great, Renee. A sight for sore eyes. They'll be talking for a while, want to take a dip? I better not, not yet anyway. Oh, come on. I hope you brought that red suit, you look terrific in it. I better. I'll ask if it's okay. Following him in the house, he asked, and when I looked at mom, she quickly nodded her head yes and handed me her bag. Dad was going to have the big one when he saw me. His mom showed me her room, telling me I could change in there, so I went in and shut the door. The bikini, which I had tried on in the store, had a panty knot cut that high, with a modestly wide triangle in front. The bra was one piece, but not very big, and tied behind my neck. I was very careful to place the padding so it wouldn't float out or something else tragic, fluffed everything up, took a deep breath, and opened the door. Walking down the short hall I could see Dad, who looked up and saw me. He started to say something, then swallowed hard and just sat there as I strolled right through the group and out to the pool. Garrett was waiting there. Damn Renee! I though you looked good before. Thanks. He and I slipped in the water, and once again I stayed in the shallow end, until he came up from behind and pulled me under. His hands were around my waist when he pulled me down, sliding up to my breasts when he came up for air. Pushing his hands away I wagged my finger at him and he swam away. I got out of the pool when our parents all walked out to the pool. Garrett went to his room to change, so I started after him. I went into the bedroom and started to change, slipping off the bottoms and stepping into my panties before I went into the bath and wrung out the padding. I had them back in place when mom and Garrett's mom came in as I walked back into the bedroom. I turned around to grab the bra, and once I had that on, Honey? Yeah mom. They know. Who knows what? I asked as I slipped the pantyhose on. Tom and Beth. They know about you. Shocked. I went still for a moment, then slipped the dress over my head and zipped it up. What about me? I asked, knowing what I would hear. About Renee. Honey, Beth, Garrett's mom said, we don't care, that's what I wanted to tell you. It's one of the reasons your father was promoted. Because he was strong enough to let you be yourself. That shows a lot of confidence in you, and your trust of him. That only comes from a close relationship. But how? 
Does Garrett know? It wasn't any one thing, honey, Garrett's mom said, it was more an accumulation of things, but as I said, we don't really care. You're a lovely girl, and your parents should be proud of you. And no, Garrett doesn't know, unless you told him? No chance, ma'am. Then we won't tell him either. Dad had tried to ruin me, then he gets promoted because the owner thought he was being open-minded. I grabbed a brush and fixed my hair the best I could, put on some makeup and my heels, then turned to look at Mom. She smiled, hugged me, and the three of us went out on the covered deck. Garrett was there and poured us each an iced tea, then sat down. I actually had a delightful time at their house, and not once did anyone mention my status. The rest of our vacation was like a dream as the three of us had a wonderful time. I wore all of my new clothes at least twice, and as the days went by dad began to treat me more like a girl than I ever imagined he would. We even had our picture taken together. I got to drive part of the way home, and by the time we did get home there was no suggestion that I become a boy again. Even if I did, I would be stuck wearing a shirt all the time to cover the pale strap lines and the twin triangles on my chest. Since nobody told me I couldn't, I kept dressing as a girl once we got home, and even visited Dad in his new office once. I still do not know what made him change his mind about me, but Dad never again tried to make me change back to being a boy, leaving me to decide on my own. Mom began to show me things girls should know, like sewing a hem or a button, and I actually made a skirt on my own. But as good as it was, the time was coming when I would have to be myself. The new school year was looming in the future, just six weeks away, and I dreaded the passing time because I knew what was coming. I saw Janet and Kathy a few times at the mall, even joining them to shop a few times. I always bought more earrings and wore three rings on each hand, much like they did. I was one of them, and I knew it. I couldn't go back to being a boy, but didn't know what to do, and could not bring myself to mention it to my parents. Renee. Renee, come in here a minute please? It was mom. When I went in the living room I saw mom with a man I didn't know. Honey, this is Mr. Broward. He's with the school board. Come sit next to me. Renee, he said, your parents have petitioned us to allow you to attend school as a girl, which is the reason I'm here. To see how you look? I said. Well, to be frank, yes. I had an entirely different vision before I saw you, I have to say that unless I knew, I doubt if I could have picked you out of the crowd. You're quite pretty. Thanks. Does this mean I can go to school as a girl? There are some legal issues that have to be addressed by your parents, but yes. I think that you'll be able to attend school as a girl. Tell me, he said after a pause, just how did this all start? The guess who party, I told him. It turned out that I wasn't picked, and I also found out that I like it. He laughed at that, then thanked us. I hugged him, and he left me with a huge grin on my face. Two days before school started mom and I went to the salon and had our hair and nails done. My hair was shoulder length by then, and I was able to have it done a bit differently. My name was changed to Renee, and I started school. Not one person knew who I actually was, which was just fine with me. As just another girl, I was subjected to the boys, who teased us, then asked us out. My first real date was just to the movies, but I loved it, and Dad never said a word when Stephen picked me up. Once again the annual Guess Who party was about to be held, but I wasn't very shocked when I wasn't picked as a girl who could be a boy. I went with Stephen, Kathy with Mike, and Kim with Glenn. As we filed out of the hall and I looked back at the boys who were girls, I wondered which one discovered something special about himself that night. Grinning, I took Stephen's arm, smiled, and silently wished that boy, whoever he is, and I just know there is at least one like me, I wished him well. To this day I do not know what changed Dad's mind and have never asked him. Maybe someday I will, but right now I have to try on Mom's wedding dress. She has some idea that I'll be able to wear it some day. Maybe that'll be the day I ask him. I hope he tells me it's because he loves me.